Brothers for giving me the opportunity to speak at this uh, wonderful event. Uh, so the title of my talk is uh, PowerShell for Power Apps and Power Automate. A little bit about who am I? Uh, my name is Prashant G. Boyer. I was born and raised in India. I came to United States uh, back in 2007 for studies. I'm a University of Maryland College Park alumni. I co-authored a book called PowerShell for Office 65. I also acted as a technical reviewer for the book uh, Pro SharePoint 2013 Administration. I am from Washington DC area and we organize a lot of community events. Uh, some of the events are uh, focused on AI and machine learning. Uh, then there are events on uh, Office 65 and also a SQL. Uh, so with that, we are organizing a couple of free virtual events and sorry for the shameless plug. Uh, I just wanted to have uh, the links out there. So if you are interested in this topic, uh, you can join us um, uh, especially uh, for Azure Data Fest on July 2nd and there will be a global AI Fest on uh, July 31st. Uh, if you are interested in speaking, uh, this call for speaker is also open and if you don't find the link, uh, just hit me up. Uh, but most of the stuff you need is available on the meetup site and these are the links you can follow. I also help uh, organize a couple of SharePoint Saturdays uh, in the Washington DC area. It's called SharePoint Saturday Baltimore and SharePoint Saturday uh, DC. Uh, I am recipient of Antarctic Service Medal. Uh, this medal I got uh, for working uh, in one of the US government station uh, in Antarctica back in 2008. And I have been getting a Microsoft MVP award since 2017. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with this award, so I don't work for Microsoft. It's just traditional recognition Microsoft uh, gives out to the folks who uh, does uh, technical contribution uh, in uh, various <clears throat> uh, Microsoft technologies. And those contributions can be in the form of speaking engagements, writing blogs, <clears throat> uh, answering questions on the forums. Uh, so for the first couple of years, I was MVP in SharePoint or specifically in or, or Office 65 and specifically in SharePoint. And since last year, I changed my category for in AI. And this award is valid for 12 months. After every 12 months, you have to submit uh, your contribution. And based on the contribution, then Microsoft decides whether to award it for you for the next year or not. So right now I work as a solution architect uh, with a company called Witham Digital. Uh, we used to call Porto Solutions before and uh, we got acquired by Witham three years before. And right now I focus on intelligent business process automation where I use uh, a combination of Microsoft products like Office 65, SharePoint, Power Automate, uh, Power Apps, Logic Apps, and also some of the other, other uh, Azure workloads like Azure Functions, <clears throat> uh, API apps, and of course, uh, Microsoft AI stack. And as I mentioned, I'm from Washington DC metropolitan area, and right now my office is located in Bethesda, Maryland. So this is a quick flyer about our company. Uh, we have three Microsoft MVPs on the staff. We have done 100 plus uh, Microsoft Cloud deployments and we have 50 plus consultants. Uh, and we have been in Microsoft business from last 17 years and we are actively looking for people. So if you are looking for a change, uh, just uh, contact me and uh, if there is an opening matching your profile, I will connect you with the hiring manager. Uh, as I mentioned, these are the links you can uh, take the screenshot of. So if you are interested uh, in joining us for a uh, global Azure Data Fest on uh, July 2nd and uh, uh, AI ML Fest uh, on uh, July 31st. All right, uh, so this is going to be, so this is the agenda for today's talk. So we will start with what is PowerShell uh, for Power Apps and Power Automate, why we should use it. You know, I know this is a developer focused conference, but even if you are a dev, why you should be aware of some of the command, command letters that are available uh, to edit, uh, create, and uh, manage Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, if you are convinced that yes, you need to use it, then how you can get started? What are some of the prerequisites for it? Uh, then we will have uh, demos, uh, best practices, uh, key takeaways, and Q&A. Even though I mentioned Q&A towards the end, uh, feel free to ask your questions at any time uh, because your questions will not only help me, but other folks uh, in, the, in the audience as well. So when it comes to managing Power Apps and Power Automate, uh, we have two options available. One is uh, the UI, like you can manage uh, Power Apps or Power Automate using, uh, if you are an administrator, then using Admin Center. If you are a developer, then using the regular uh, option that we get. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, we can also use uh, PowerShell for Power Apps and Power Automate. And in this session, we'll be focusing mostly on PowerShell. 
So when it comes to the admin center, there are multiple ways you can navigate to. Uh, if you are using browser UI, uh, then the, U the links that you have to follow, especially if you are interested in seeing the admin uh, uh, admin center of Power Automate, then you have to go to admin.flow.microsoft.com. Or if you just log in uh, the regular flow URL, uh, then on the top left, uh, top right corner, you will see settings and there you will see admin center. Now, that button, that particular option will be visible only if you have admin access. If you are a regular developer, chances are that option will not be available. Uh, it helps to manage like the data policies, the environments, uh, the user licenses, the quotas, uh, and all the flows within uh, the organization. The same case is with uh, the Power Apps Admin Center. So this is the URL you can use to directly navigate to that, or you can go to make.powerapps.com and then go to settings and then go to Admin Center. Again, uh, here, uh, both these links will work. These options work provided you have admin access to that particular uh, tenant. And again, just like Power Automate, uh, the Power Apps Admin Center help us to um, manage data policies, environments, user licenses, quotas, and all the flow within the organization. So before I start with uh, what is uh, PowerShell for Power Automate, uh, let me start uh, this session with a story. Um, and then the, because the reason I want to tell you that story is just to give you just to mention the emphasis uh, that PowerShell brings on the table, even if you are just a developer. Uh, OK, I want to see. OK, so I. So we got a new client uh, nine months before and that client had a really good implementation of Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, but the people who, who were managing that uh, they left one by one. So initially uh, one of the architect left in let's say in May, uh, then follow up another engineer left in um, in June and the client didn't have any clue what's going on uh, and they needed uh, help uh, to manage uh, their uh, customization and automation. And then we came in and uh, the client didn't have any clue how many power apps they have, how many power automate they have, uh, what are these doing? So. The first op option that the first thing that we had to do is basically take control of all the power apps and power automate they have in their tenant. Of course, uh, you can do that <clears throat> uh, using a uh, global uh, admin center, but it takes a lot of time. So what we end up doing is we we took the help of PowerShell where we wrote some PowerShell script, which I'll be showing you in a demo later on where it will go through each and every flow and power app that you have in your in your particular tenant, and it will add uh, <clears throat> a owner uh, as as uh, Office 65 group as owner. So that way, no matter what uh, what that power app or uh, power automate is doing, whether it's for your personal use or whether it's for <clears throat> uh, any uh, production use, it's basically will be listed um, under uh, a set of users who are part of that Office 65 group. If there was no partial support. We would we would have looked at like a manual labor and chances with manual labor. Sometimes you do some mistakes where you may leave out some of the important power apps and power automate uh, and not give the control because if you remember, if you look at uh, the power apps or power automate um, UI, that UI is good as long as you have 20 to 30 flows or power apps to manage. The more you have, uh, that UI is not that supportive because you don't have a direct search there. You had to navigate through it, and it's just a time-consuming operation. Whereas with PowerShell, let's say you have hundreds and hundreds of Power Automate or or hundreds of flows or hundreds of Power Apps deployed in your tenant, uh, you can quickly find the one you need, and you can quickly do the changes in that. And, and another advantage of using uh, PowerShell is. Right now we have two different UIs to manage Power Apps and Power Automate. With PowerShell, you will just be working in a single PowerShell window where you will be executing commandlets to manage both Power Apps and Power Automate. So, what are some of the advantage of uh, using, um, like, what is Power uh, Shell for Power Apps and Power Automate? It's basically a management tool that complements uh, the admin center. And uh, we can use PowerShell to automation uh, to quickly manage uh, Power Apps, uh, Power Automate, and why we should use it. Uh, because using uh, the PowerShell, it can reveal uh, some additional information that you cannot see with the admin center. Now here, uh, the reason for that is 
when it comes to the admin center microsoft does not have tons and tons of resources at disposal to you know to <clears throat> to give you the option to do each and everything that you can do with uh, power apps and power automate and same is the true with azure as well as microsoft 365 where the admin center will give you most common 80 to 90 uh, percent of the things that you will norm uh, admin will be normally doing, but there'll always be that uh, remaining 10 percent for that you have to use power uh, PowerShell. The same is the story with uh, uh, with the PowerShell for Power Apps and Power Automate. Uh, there are some features that you can only configure using PowerShell. Uh, it's great performing bulk operation. Let's say you have to quickly change the data connect uh, the connections. Uh, uh, let's say with uh, with with data connection of let's say 30 Power Apps or <clears throat> or 30 power automate you can you can easily do that and quickly do that uh, using powershell it also great at filtering data if you are looking for a specific power app or a specific microsoft flow you can do that easily using powershell uh, it also allows you to automate repetitive tasks like if you have any kind of government policies that you want to enforce uh, where you shouldn't be having any kind of personal flows at all in your uh, uh, in your tenant, anything that you create has to be shared with, uh, let's say, an admin group or something like that. You can easily do that uh, using PowerShell, where you have a PowerShell which runs on a schedule, and all it does is it scans through all the power, uh, power, power apps and Power Automate that you have in your tenant, and it adds a specific uh, <clears throat> Office 65 group or a specific service account as admin uh, or as owner, so that you know at least your Power App. Our flow is shared with at least one person in the organization. Where if you leave, uh, then uh, your power apps or power automate won't re remain in, in silos. Uh, it makes uh, the printing and saving the data. You can export whatever the reports you get from PowerShell into a CSV. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and another key feature is you don't need to have access to the premium plans. Like this is a big. Uh, when uh, the commandlets got first launched, uh, there was to for certain uh, scenarios there was a pro there was a limitation that you need to have access to premium plants and this is really helpful especially if you are getting license for power apps and uh, <clears throat> power automate through office 65 or through microsoft 365 license because a lot of time you the premium features are not automatically covered if you are getting license for uh, power apps and power, power automate through dynamics then law often the premium features are already covered but if you're coming from another world where you're getting the access to Power Apps and Power Automate through uh, Office 65 license or Microsoft 365 license, then the premium features are not available. You have to play, pay um, extra money for that. So using PowerShell, you can do a lot, a lot of things uh, that, and uh, for that you don't need uh, access to the premium plans. And to me, like whenever I had to tell and like, convince anyone with using uh, regular UI to manage some, something versus the PowerShell, so when it comes to the UI, think of it as using like if you had to go from destination A to B, then managing using UI is like using public transportation where you have to depending on the route availability and uh, the options you may have to, you know, let's see if if to go from place A to place B, I, if it takes like uh, 20 minutes by car. Uh, and if you are using public transportation, depending on the geographical location, sometimes it may take you one hour or two hours. Uh, that's certainly true in Washington DC metropolitan area where uh, if I had to use Metro here, then I may be spending a lot more time than if I, I just use uh, I, uh, my own car. So using PowerShell is like driving your own car where you have a lot many options and you're not uh, limited with the constraints that with a UI uh, provides. Uh, so how to use? Uh, so since both Power Apps and Power Automate are software as a service, that means uh, we don't control the infrastructure where both these services are hosted. We don't have direct access to the servers where uh, these services are hosted. So we need to install a remote management tool and we need to install those tools uh, on a machine which we will be using uh, to run PowerShell. So there are two separate modules, and that's a good thing about it uh, because let's say so far I all I describe is okay, it's good uh, you know as a complementary for admin center. But what if you are not admin? You are just a simple, you are just a, a developer or architect where you don't have admin access, but you are still in charge of developing uh, the Power Apps and uh, Flow. For that, you there are two separate uh, modules we have. One is called uh, the Maker module, 
uh, where uh, this is the model that you had to use, install and it's for the makers. That means for the developers and its name is Microsoft.PowerApps.PowerShell. And if you see the name, uh, so Microsoft has combined uh, the Power Apps and Power Automate or Flow modules into uh, like all commandlets into the same module. And if you are an administrator, then this is the additional um, module that you had to install. And uh, the commandlets that are available are uh, different in those uh, both modules. And another thing I want to highlight is right now both uh, <clears throat> uh, the power, uh, both the modules are in preview. That means Microsoft has all the rights to update uh, these commandlets. Now, one thing, since it's a remote management, uh, one thing that is good, uh, even though it's in preview, is let's say I install this model today and I develop my PowerShell script based on that and they are running fine. And tomorrow, after one month, let's say Microsoft release a new module. Unless you update the module, the old uh, PowerShell script that you have created will still work. And if there are no changes that will break your previous script, you're fine. But let's say if there are changes, you still have option of, you know, uh, testing those PowerShell commandlets on a new, new machine or server where you install the updates for the module, test it there, do the fixes, and then do the changes, uh, subsequent changes in your production. So there is a good story available, but only thing you have to keep in mind is Microsoft reserves the full right uh, to change uh, some of the commandlets because they are in preview. So what are some of the prerequisites uh, for this one? Uh, so for uh, the PowerShell Power Apps commandlet for app creators, you need to have a valid Power Apps or Power Automate license. So as long as you have that, you can execute uh, these commandlets, which are made for creators. And the, the access to uh, the Power Apps and Power Automate are limited to the one that you have created or that has been shared with you. So with the creator uh, a module, you cannot uh, see other uh, users uh, Power Automate or uh, or Power Apps. As long if, if they are not shared with you, then you will not see that. Uh, when it comes to the Power Apps commandlets for administrator, if you have any of these following three roles, you can use these commandlets of uh, one is the global admin. If you are a global admin in your Microsoft 365 or Office 65 tenant, if you are a Azure Active Directory global admin, uh, if, or if you have a dynamic, if you are a Dynamics 365 service administrator, if you are you, if your account has any of the three roles, uh, you can use the commandlets which are for administrators. Uh, another thing that you have to remember is. If you are using administrative uh, commandlets, then the account that you will be using to you uh, to execute those commandlets, you need to access the web version of uh, the admin center at least once. Uh, the reason for that is when you log in once, uh, then Microsoft does some uh, store some things in the backend which uh, allows you to uh, access the commandlets without logging for the first time. If you directly try to uh, access the uh, try to execute the commandlets, you will get sign in error. Uh, so with that, I want to pause here and see if there are any questions in the chat window or if anyone have a question, they can also raise their hand so we'll know. All right, looks like there are none. Um, a quick question. I am seeing, uh, I'm not seeing the full windows in the Teams client. Hopefully that's not the case uh, with Raz at your machine and you can still uh, see the full full uh, view of my uh, power uh, uh, PowerPoint deck. Hi there, Prashant. Yes, that's a known issue with Teams. Um, for us, we can see your screen. Okay. I believe um the, the render of Teams. Uh, sometimes you have to disconnect and reconnect for it to fix that problem. Unfortunately, um, but for me, it's fine. It may be affecting a couple of users, but no one's reported it yet. Okay, that's fine. All right. All right, so when it comes to the Power Apps a commandlet, so typical pattern, and that will help you to remember some of the commandlets is, so if you are a maker, uh, then the typical syntax will be, you will have a verb, a verb like get, update, and it will, it will have hyphen Power App and then the noun. So example, and if it's gonna be administrator, then it will be verb, hyphen admin Power App, and then the noun. Uh, so the example is, if you, under the maker, you will have get Power App, uh, get Power App connection. Under administrator, you will have get admin Power App environment role assignment. 
uh, and please note uh, like not all the command lets follow this particular uh, pattern in the naming pattern like 95% follow that but there are some command lets which don't follow this pattern and example are get tenant setting which itself is self explanatory is there will be some command lets available uh, will be available which will not follow that pattern but this is a general like you can keep in mind okay and it's same is true like if you have used powershell for office 65 as well where uh, microsoft try to have some kind of naming convention or pattern where it's easier for you to guess like what can be the command lets for this uh, same is the case with uh, Power Automate, where uh, they haven't done uh, the rename of Power Automate to the flow uh, from flow to Power Automate um, uh, as of, as of today, and I don't think they will do that because right now using the PowerShell we can only manage the flows. Like under Power Automate, you have flow, you have UI flows, uh, you have business process flows. But right now we can only manage the flows and business process flows. Uh, so when it comes to the administrator, it's going to be verb hyphen admin flow and then the noun. So example will be get flow, get flow owner role, get admin flow owner role, and uh, same is the case. Like some some commandlets won't follow uh, these patterns. Uh, so let's say you are totally new to this, uh, you and you're interested to know like what are some of the commandlets available. So to find all the commandlets uh, which are using Power Apps. What you can do is you can just go to your uh, PowerShell and just type get command and power app. Uh, same is the case with uh, the flow and to get the help. Uh, what you can do it, you can find the name of the commandlet. Uh, sorry, get help uh, space and name of the commandlet. And if you want to see the specific example, like how to use that, uh, then you just have to use additional parameter called examples. Uh, if you want to see the detail help, then you can use a uh, uh, detail option. And if you want to see the full help, then you can use the full option. So with that, I want to quickly show you uh, something real quick. So I have uh, already installed the two modules. Uh, the installation steps are very simple. You just have to like do install module and name of uh, those modules for Maker and uh, for Maker and uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the admin. So let's say if I want to see all the commands uh, which are using flow in it. So these are the commands I have. One thing you have to note is make also pay attention to the source because depending on if you if you are using the same machine to work with various products in Microsoft ecosystem, you may have some additional commandlets which will use uh, this particular string called flow in it. And one of the examples I would like to give you is this one, copy workflow, which I have installed ShareGate on my machine, so I have that. This is I have from Azure Resource Management. So, so you need to you need to keep uh, into that uh, uh, into account. Uh, so let's see what are some of the uh, commands available for Power Apps. Okay, and so these many are available uh, for the one. And let's say if I'm interested in getting the, uh, let's say I want to see uh, all the flows and I don't know what kind of syntax uh, that particular commandlet will have. So for that, you can either always browse and uh, you know look for the commandlet or you can, without leaving your PowerShell window, uh, you can just type get help and then the name of uh, the commandlet. <clears throat> And if, if the name is correct, uh, then you will see uh, the brief information about that particular commandlet. What's the syntax? What's the description? And then if you want to see the additional additional help, like now I want to see uh, the examples, like how I can use this. So if you do this, uh, it will come back with examples that you can use. Uh, only thing is you need to okay uh, change some of the setting, some of the unique things that it comes with like in this case uh, the environment name if you if the, your environment GUID is this uh, then it will work otherwise you have to provide your own uh, GUID. If you want to see uh, the full uh, one uh, so what you can do it is you can just do full and it will show you the full information in terms of uh, the all the detailed description uh, the examples and this information you will likely like you will get that on online uh, like docs on docs.microsoft.com as well where the format and everything is pretty much the same it will come back with all the parameters that that particular commandlets will need 
which are required, which are not, and then some of the examples that we'll come back with. All right. When it comes to, um, okay, before that, let's see if there are any questions. Okay, uh, so I see there is a question from Zahid. Can we use Center of Excellence to manage Power Apps and Flow instead of using PowerShell? Uh, uh, what does Center of Excellence? Is it like, are you talking about uh, the admin center? Then yes, uh, but are you, What's center of excellence? Can you uh, throw more? Yes, light? so uh, Prashant, uh, basically the, there was a center of excellence for the Power Platform that was released by um, the product group um, uh, a, a few months ago. Well, actually not a few months ago. It's, it's been out for quite a while, mm -hmm. half a year now. Um, so that's a, a, a that's a series of uh, frameworks to help manage uh, the deployments. Oh, okay. Uh, for, yeah. So I personally have not played uh, that with. Uh, so I need to double check on that, but my most likely since the power apps commandlets are still in preview, most likely they will not be uh, included in that as of yet, but uh, don't quote me on this. I need to double check and, and give you that answer. And then the next one is uh, we should be able to do the same PowerShell operation using power apps admin connectors. Uh, I didn't get that question like. Uh, Can you elaborate, uh, Danny? Like, what exactly uh, you're trying to ask here? So basically, whatever options you get uh, in UI's or uh, UI, like uh, admin center, you should be able to do the same kind of operation using uh, the PowerShell as well. Uh, so when it comes to user uh, user or maker capabilities, uh, these are the things we can do: is we can read uh, the environments, uh, we can read update or delete a Canvas app. You can read, uh, update, delete Canvas app permissions. Uh, you can read and delete uh, connections. Uh, you can read, update, and delete connection permissions, uh, which is used. Um, and also, uh, you can read and delete a custom connector. When it comes to the Power Apps uh, admin, a tenant admin capabilities, these are the things we can do. Uh, like you can read and delete environments. You can read, update, and delete environment permissions. Uh, you can recover, con like remove or recover Canvas apps. Uh, you can read or delete connections. Uh, same as the permissions, uh, custom connectors, same thing you can do. Uh, same you can do with the permissions as well. Uh, this is huge, uh, especially if you want to have some kind of governance around uh, <clears throat> uh, If you have any governance around read, uh, like if you want to have any governance around, like okay, if someone is leaving the organization, then or if someone is changing the department and is going to some other department where the environments are not shared, then you can use some government uh, governance there using <clears throat> the admin um, uh, commandlets. Uh, uh, this this is used like if you want to have some kind of one of. If you want to create or read or update a DLPs, you can do that using the PowerShell commandlets. Uh, so when it comes to the user or maker capabilities, uh, the the list is pretty much the same uh, that you get uh, with uh, uh, with the Power Apps. Uh, so with that, let's move to the demo section. Uh, but it looks like there is one more question here. So Satya is asking, I had a problem using get admin flow command for a service user with MFA enabled. How do you manage to do this operation with NFA enabled? Okay, uh, so with the M when it comes to multi-factor authentication, it's always tricky. And based on how you have implemented that in your organization, like what kind of feature you have, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's going to be challenging. Uh, in terms of you may have to uh, bypass that just using uh, an app password for that. Or uh, you may have to like I have seen like the easiest option that a lot of uh, organization have used, especially if you have to use PowerShell for uh, some of the admin capabilities, uh, or for then and then you create a service account where the MFA is not enabled. Of course, that is not a recommended practice, but to bypass a lot of these challenges that you get with MFA, you can uh, you can also uh, do that. Uh, so, so far, uh, Satya, uh, I have enabled MFA in my couple of tenants uh, and we haven't had any uh, issue authenticating against uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, 
uh, uh, the the power apps or uh, flow commandlets. Now, when it comes to MFA, it all depends like how exactly uh, the configuration is and how exactly your accounts are set up. Uh, in terms of whether those are cloud only account, that means those only exist in Azure Active Directory or those are synced directly from your local Active Directory to the Azure Active Directory. So there are multiple uh, options and again, I don't have a specific answer for you. Depending on your case, you have to find what, what will work uh, in your case. So with that, uh, the first thing you always need to do uh, when it comes to using uh, a PowerShell is you need to first <clears throat> Authenticate uh, since it's it's a remote management uh, in your uh, PowerShell window. You need to first authenticate uh, against your tenant, and and the command led for that is add uh, Power Apps account. And if this is the first time you are using it, uh, then you can always do uh, get help, and it will tell you like okay, what kind of uh, syntax it is has. Uh, and what kind of information that you have to provide. If any one of you are, uh, are using our government customer, uh, then to connect to the government uh, tenants, you have to use some additional parameters, like you have to provide whether you are trying to connect to the US Gov or US Gov High. Uh, but if you are just coming connecting to the commercial uh, tenants, you don't have to specify this one. So let's say let's connect to that. And here I'm not going to specify um, uh, 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 I'm not going to specify uh, the username. I'm just going to prompt for the admin and login and password. So once it's connected, it won't give you any error message, and that's a good clue that okay, now you are actually connected. And the first thing I always uh, uh, tell people is since there is no let's say success message when you are uh, successfully authenticated is always a good practice to execute some read only commandlet just to confirm you are connected to the correct uh, tenant and uh, the, everything is correct so in this case i'm just going to do like get a flow environment and if my login id and everything is correct uh, this commandlet should execute and it should come back with some <clears throat> some information so right now i have two environments in my tenant and the information of that uh, came back so that means i was able to make uh, the connection without any issue now since the tenant i'm using i am a global admin so let's see i want to see all uh, all the flows uh, in my particular tenant so the commandlet for that is get admin flow and if you want to see the flows that you have created or you are, are shared with you, uh, then the command for that is get flow. So in this case, I'm going to be using get admin flow. And it will come back with the answer and it will come back with all the information for a flow. Now let's see what this information constitutes. So it came back with the name of the flow, which is a GUID basically uh, <clears throat> uh, because uh, Microsoft will use that GUID uh, to, to identify uh, the uniqueness of your flow. Uh, then whether it's enabled or not, uh, it's display name, uh, the, uh, then uh, created created by the lost modified environment name and uh, <clears throat> uh, some of the other information about uh, the environment. Now, if, let's say if this information, you want to generate a report, but this is not in the right format. Uh, just like with any other PowerShell commandlets, uh, you can always use pipe to get uh, the specific uh, information that you need. So in this case, I can do select object and flow name and display name. And here you'll see I, I got a nice information about flow name and display name. So if you want to periodically generate reports, how many flows you have, uh, you can use this get admin flow commandlet and uh, you can use uh, some selected information from that and you can get a nice report of that. Now let's say let's do the same thing with uh, a power app. So if I had to use the power app, uh, then the commandlet again. This is for <clears throat> uh, if I use get power app, uh, then it will show me all the power apps that I have created using this account or that has been shared with this account. Uh, so right now it's just one uh, because this is a brand new like this is in this tenant I haven't uh, created any uh, power app. It just like one a couple of the one or two. Now let's say I want to see some of the uh, tenant level settings, right? 
Uh, so these are the tenetal settings I can be seeing. So imagine if I had to see all this stuff using the UI, uh, chances are, <clears throat> Uh, chances are I will be looking at a lot of different, different. Uh, uh, I had to go to a lot of different, different screens, and the amount of time I had to spend. Like this information we got maybe in two to three minutes, whereas if I use admin center, uh, it may take anywhere between five to ten minutes, depending on how familiar I am with uh, <clears throat> uh, with uh, with that particular UI. Uh, looks like there is one comment. Uh, Regarding COE, COE capabilities and PowerShell commandlets capability don't replace each other. Uh, OK. Thank you. Thanks for that feedback. All right, um, then let's see uh, what's next. Uh, what's next we can do is. OK. Uh, all right. Now let's see. This one is a particularly important commandlet, and you may be using this a lot, especially if your organization has a lot of high turnover. That means um, the team members come, they develop the flows or power apps, and they leave, or uh, they may get allocated to different different departments, and you want to constantly change uh, the owners. Or okay, all right. Uh, so this for this commandlet, you have to provide uh, the environment name. Uh, for this one, so let's say if you don't know the environment name, uh, then how uh, you can find it out, right? Uh, so for that, uh, you can always use the commandlet get environment name get a flow environment. Let's do that. All right, uh, so this is uh, the environment name we have. All right, so let's let's copy that. And let's provide that uh, for this one and see if any additional parameter that we have to specify. OK, then the name of the flow. So if I don't know, uh, then I can always get that from this previous uh, screen. Uh, previous one where. All right, so let's say I am looking interested in finding the owners for this one. Uh, so let me what I will do is I will just create a new. Uh, new one note where I will save all these parameters and then I will use that in the commandlet. All right. So right now this is the environment name and let's copy uh, this particular uh, name of the flow. And now let's type uh, that commandlet. Okay. And environment name is this. And let's find the flow name. All right, so if everything is correct, it will come back uh, with uh, the information and that information will have other like stuff like, OK, who are the people uh, who, who have access to it? Now, one thing you had to note here is so whenever uh, whenever you use the commandlets, Microsoft flow or power the PowerShell commandlets will not give you the explicit email address of um, uh, the user. The, the 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 information that will come back is with the unique identifier and it got uh, <clears throat> unit identifier for that one and it will be in the form of this one principal object id uh, there is a way where you can get this let's say for you, for a particular user you can get this value using azure um, commandlets but in case if you are not familiar with azure and you only want to stick with uh, uh, powershell commandlets for power apps and flow and you want to find this out uh, there is an easy way to do that using UI. Uh, let me show that real quick. Uh, okay, uh, let me move this over here. And if I go to, let's say, uh, this is my Office 65 admin center. If I click on Azure Active Directory, and under this, if I go to Users, sorry, wrong wrong option, and all users. And let's say if I'm interested in looking at uh, the principal ID for this one. So the moment I click on the users, just look at uh, the URL at the top. So this is the unique identifier for this particular user, and I can and I actually I need that uh, to use that uh, inside the PowerShell commandlets in case I wanna uh, you know modify this. Uh, 
owners and I want to add a new owner. So instead of providing the email address, you have to provide <clears throat> uh, the principal object ID. That means a unique identifier for the user. Uh, and I think there is a reason for that because uh, <clears throat> that's going to be the, your unique name. Um, so let's see how much time we have. We have 15 minutes. So let me quickly show you uh, a script, uh, a sample script, uh, which we have used. And let me see how can I do. OK. Uh, right. All right. So what we are doing in this particular script is. Uh, let's say there is a scenario where. Uh, you want you want to. You want to add owners like a particular service account or Office 65 group as owner to all the existing flows so that you won't be having any issue with the orphan flow. In, in cases like let's say I as a um, contractor came in and created let's say 10 flows and 10 power apps and then I forgot to share that with uh, with anyone else and those are created with my account and now I'm no longer working with your organization and the admin has to now share that with other people. Uh, you can always uh, use uh, this kind of a command that where. Here I will be providing the email address, but I will be using Azure uh, Active Directory commandlets as well to get uh, the unique identifier uh, from the email address. So here what we are doing is on line number seven, uh, we are specifying. Uh, uh, we are specifying uh, add uh, Power Apps account. We are specifying the email address on line, num line number seven. Uh, then the first thing we are doing is making the connection uh, to uh, the Power Apps or flow uh, using add Power Apps uh, account on line number 11. Then on line number 12, we are connecting to the Azure Active Directory uh, because to get uh, the unique ID of the user, I need to connect to the Azure Active Directory. Uh, then first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the flow environment, storing that into a variable. Uh, then I'm writing that uh, flow like environment variable uh, environment ID on uh, on the host. Uh, then on line number 19, I'm make getting using the uh, the Azure Active Directory commandlet called uh, get Azure ID user. And here, only thing I'm looking interested is its object ID that's unique identifier, and that I'm storing in in a particular a variable called user ID. And then on line number 23, I'm getting all the flows which are there in my tenant, and I'm on from line number 24, I'm using a for each loop where I'm iterating through each and every uh, flow. And then on line number 27, I'm using this commandlet called set admin flow owner rule, uh, where I'm following the syntax uh, and, and providing some values where first thing I need to provide what's the user principal type, it's a user, uh, then the, what's the role name, it's owner or read. Here I can specify as owner. Uh, then uh, the name of the flow and name of the environment. And if everything is good, it will basically add uh, the owners, uh, that particular user as owner in the flow. So with that, I want to quickly show you uh, my UI right now. So let me go to uh, the Power Automate here real quick. Let me go to Power Automate and then And click on my flows. So right now I have these many flows which I have created using this account that I logged in, but I haven't shared with anyone in my organization, which is uh, if if you are using anything for your uh, work or if you're using anything for any kind of automation, uh, then um, it's not a good practice uh, because what if uh, tomorrow I'm no longer with the organization, then other people will not have access to it, right? So now I want to show this. Uh, my admin want to share this flow with, with a generic account or a service account or Office 65 group. So what we'll be doing is basically uh, in this PowerShell script, uh, this is the uh, account uh, we have used, and now we'll be executing the script and see. Uh, and after, if everything get executed properly, 
I shouldn't be saying any flows here under my flows. All these flows should be part of will will get uh, migrate to the team flows because I have share. I will be sharing that with someone else. So with that, let me quickly uh, go to here and uh, execute uh, this script. Okay, and all right. Now it will ask me for the logging prompt first for uh, uh, the Power Automate and second thing for the uh, Azure Active Directory. And one thing which I find very really, really annoying uh, with uh, the Power Apps and Power Automate commandlets is you cannot you cannot use the get credential commandlets and pass uh, that uh, to this particular commandlet. You have to explicitly either provide the credentials or you have to explicitly use uh, the sign in option. That's why I'll be getting uh, the logging uh, twice here. All right. So if everything is working fine now, uh, now I'm getting prompt to log into the Azure Directory directory. All right, so it's going one by one and it's adding uh, the owner. So looks like there is there was some uh, <clears throat> uh, issue with uh, the command. So there was an error and the reason <clears throat> uh, the script still went through even though there was error because we had uh, a try catch enabled. So that's a good uh, practice to have whenever you are doing some kind of operation and you just don't want your script to break and you want to uh, do a proper <clears throat> uh, event uh, like error handling uh, just like in regular uh, programming language like uh, the JavaScript or C sharp you can do uh, try catch same thing you can do with PowerShell as well. Uh, so before fixing this issue with the script let me see if there are any questions because we have just 11 minutes left so I just want to be cognizant of the time. Uh, looks like there is a comment. Uh, uh, can you share a command to bypass admin consent to a specific canvas app? So I don't remember on the top of my head. So whenever you have this kind of questions, uh, always go to. Uh, always go to uh, this one uh, where you'll, you'll see the list of all the commands that are available. So in this case, uh, you're looking for admin consent. So let's see. Uh, if something is available. So you see this. Uh, I just use the regular search option and looks like there is an option available to bypass that. OK, uh, but looks like you need to be uh, admin for that. Uh, and then let's see. Uh, can you share command it? Uh, that's done. There is a blog post from Daniel. All right. And then is there a way to differentiate flows that are part of a solution? and flows uh, that are uh, outside of a solution. So good question. Uh, let's uh, try that out. So for that, what I will do is I will just uh, use the command let get admin flow and see if anything comes back uh, as part of uh, this that will give you give us uh, <clears throat> uh, the differentiation. So right now only thing that it come back with flow name, enable display name, user type, uh, and environment name. So, so far I don't see anything here that will that will explicitly tell us whether it's a part of a solution or whether it's, whether it's an individual flow. All right. Uh, so we still have to fix that error. I will come back later, but let me finish with uh, other stuff that I want to finish today. And then, all right. So another thing I want to quickly highlight is and uh, not many people may be aware of this since uh, I think the majority of OK, uh, there is a question from Rohit Sharma. Can we use similar commandlets for logic app? So for that logic app is part of Azure, so you have to use Azure commandlets for that. And uh, so the syntax and uh, the module that you have to install will be different. Uh, those will not be uh, part of uh, the uh, the models which are there for power apps and power automate. So and yes, there will be uh, not similar, not exactly the copy, but similar commandlets uh, is, are, are definitely available there. There is another uh, <clears throat> uh, thing called PNP PowerShell, which not many people are familiar with. 
uh, because when it comes to power at sun flow, the audience is mixed. Some people use power and at sun flow from the dynamics or some people use from uh, SharePoint. So if you are using SharePoint or if you have any kind of SharePoint footprint, uh, then you should definitely explore uh, the PNP PowerShell. It's basically an open source uh, community driven initiative. Uh, and it allows us to perform complex provisioning and artifact management uh, towards SharePoint. And behind the scene, it uses uh, the CSOM, which is client side object model. And you can find more information on that on docs.microsoft.com. Uh, and if you follow this link, and uh, everything is open source, you can also contribute and you can also uh, like uh, write the new commandlets and you can also, uh, you know, help them to enhance the commandlets as well. So right now the commandlets are available for SharePoint Online, which comes as a part of Office 65, and also uh, it uh, they, they are available for uh, SharePoint uh, <clears throat> uh, PNP PowerShell. Another good thing is if you are not using SharePoint per se, but if you are using let's say Microsoft Teams or if you're using Office 65 groups, even Dynamics when you create a group. Uh, the files that get stored are get stored in SharePoint. So you can use this command, uh, this PNP model for SharePoint PNP PowerShell online, and you can still work with those uh, files uh, which are in um, um, uh, in SharePoint. Some of the best practices. Uh, keep in mind all both the commandlets for Power Apps and Power Automate are still in preview. That means Microsoft has all reserve has reserved all the rights to make any changes to it. Uh, so expect few commandlets may get changed or few may get added. And uh, you should always like it. See if you are doing something which 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 is really big and you have not done that before. It's always best to try your commandlets uh, or script in a test environment. And uh, this is true for any, any PowerShell. Like try to avoid running in production for the first time, especially if it involves doing some kind of updates or some kind of changes. If it's a read operation, it may be okay, uh, but any kind of update or deletion, uh, don't run it directly on production. Always run it in a test environment first. If you are unsure, like what exact what what a particular command it will do, uh, just try uh, hyphen what if at the end of uh, it, and it will show you what it's doing. And when you are creating custom scripts, uh, which will be using all these commandlets, uh, use a proper naming convention because I have seen a lot of instances where the scripts are not properly named and there is not a good description at the top. So the someone who's coming next, or if even if you are revisiting that script after six months or 12 months, chances are you will not recollect what you are doing or the name will not imply is what you're doing and also uh, if you don't have description uh, and it's intended use, you may have to spend some time just looking at the code, uh, the, 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 the script and see what exactly it's doing. And this is, um, I know that you may have heard this a lot, but never, never store your credential in the script. Uh, this particular uh, uh, command let uh, get, uh, get add Power Apps account gives you the option to provide credentials, uh, but never never store that in a script like find another mechanism if you have to explicitly store the credential then there are some mechanism available where you can encrypt that so people cannot read that like if you, if they are opening that script and also if you are men mentioning the password in the script i have seen a lot of instances where people um, by mistake upload the scripts directly into the source control and then they will they will stay there for forever uh, if you don't have access to Power Apps and Power Automate and you want to play with it, uh, there is a quick and easy way to get that. And not many people are follow uh, are familiar with it, especially the people who are coming from Dynamics World is if you join uh, Office 65 developer program uh, by going to dev.office.com, you can get uh, your personal subscription uh, with E5 uh, license. And uh, that subscription will be good for three to four months with 25 users. Uh, and all you have to do is jo go to dev.office.com and sign up for and join uh, the developer program. And then within minutes, you will have your own tenant. That means you will be a global admin. This is a good way of trying. Let's say you want to do a major change in your production tenant and you want to quickly want to try it in a, in a test tenant. This is a good way of creating a tenant. Try out your uh, admin commandlets uh, for Power, Power Apps and, uh, and uh, Power Automate there. And the way Microsoft this program has is if you are using this uh, tenant actively, Microsoft may extend your trial period for another three months. You can always sign up for the free trials. Uh, 
you may have to use Azure uh, every now and then, uh, especially, especially if you want to host uh, this script and want to run it on a schedule. For that, you can use um, Azure Functions. Uh, and for and how to get access to that is there are multiple ways. Uh, the most recommended way is to get uh, the access to Azure through MSDN. If you have access to uh, MSDN, then I would highly recommend that you go to your MSDN portal and see if your account qualifies for any free credits in Azure. Because here you will be a, a, a global admin in your tenant and you don't have to use any credit card. And let's say you spin up something and you already consume $150. Uh, that's not the limit of my account, then everything will stop. I won't get charged for anything extra. You can always sign up for free trial. Uh, the credit you do require a credit card. Uh, and right now it comes up with a $200 limit uh, that you can use within a year. There is another program from Microsoft called Microsoft DreamSpark, which used to be, uh, or Microsoft Imagine, which used to be called DreamSpark before, where you don't need a credit card, but however, you need a valid .edu account from a participant school and institution. So you have to check whether the account that you have uh, and the school that the account belongs to actually participate in the program or not. Uh, most of the major institution in US are uh, participate in that. I'm not sure about, uh, institutions which are not US based, but but that's worth checking, especially if you or anyone from your family is still going to the school and you have a dot edu account. Uh, make sure you check whether uh, you can get any free credits uh, from Microsoft in Azure. Uh, so some of the key takeaways, hopefully the contents we covered today made you excited about uh, uh, explore the PowerShell for Power Apps and Power Automate, and these are the links. Uh, the second link is for uh, PNP PowerShell and sign up for uh, developer uh, a program. So someone just posted that uh, the page not found. So let's take a look at that after uh, this couple of slides. Uh, so these are the things we covered today. Uh, please fill out the session survey and let us know uh, how the session went. Uh, if there are any kind of uh, ch changes we can we need to do or any kind of feedback, I will definitely look forward to that. And if you have any questions, these are my contact details. Uh, please free to contact me. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, and also if you have any follow-up question, as always uh, uh, email me on uh, my personal email address. With that, I want to pause and see if there are any questions. If not, uh, then Nagesh, you can, uh, sorry, Danish, you can take control. I know you are the next speaker here. And let's see what's the deal with uh, dev.office.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like it's not working. So let's say developer dot office dot com. If it's working or not. If not, let, let's use uh, developer. Office 365 program and see what links comes up. All right. Uh, okay, so this is the link. I think looks like they did some change. Oh, let me go back. Okay. All right. Uh, so let me post uh, this link in the chat window. Looks like Microsoft recently made that change. Uh, so this is the link you should be using, and I will update this link in the deck as well. Where he, here you have a step by step in, um, uh, instruction on how you can join this program and get your personal tenant with E5 subscription for free with 25 users. All right. Uh, any more question? Unfortunately, I don't think we have time to troubleshoot the issue with that uh, particular script, uh, but I will post that on my GitHub link, and the URL for that is. Uh, all right. So let me paste that in the chat window as well. You can reuse that uh, in uh, in your tenant as well. So with that, thanks uh, for the organizers, uh, and now you can uh, take uh, control. I will stop Thank sharing you. now. Thank you, Prashant. Cool. Okay, so let me get started. Um, let me set up my station and get control. Can you all see my screen? I'm hoping that you can see it. 
So before I start, I'm going to paste my uh, information. Uh, if you want to connect me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, or download any of the tools that I have built, then that would be provided in the chat window.